uh, we are, uh, uh, I will, I'm going to go through some of the key detail about data center and cooling for data center. So certainly we are uh, experiencing uh, a, a revolution on the data center and in particular on the uh, data center connected to AI and, con and cooling for AI. So we at Snyder are uh, certainly working on the data center since uh, ever and uh, uh, the possibility to see the transition that is happening for to normal cooling from normal cooling to liquid cooling as well as uh, the other challenges that any of us are uh, uh, required to address in the in the next coming years so uh, yeah i will say we have a three major uh, challenges that we need to address when we talk about the liquid uh, when we talk about cooling for data centers certainly the uh, the uh, evolution from air to liquid cooling and the densification that is happening on data center that's absolutely one point uh, as well as the sustainability in the decarbonization topic this is a data center as you know and in particular for cooling for data center are one of the worst or the most uh, critical application for on the energy perspective uh, before the pandemic uh, uh, air uh, uh, transportation uh, was primarily uh, driving our uh, sustainability effort and right now globally the data center are uh, the most impacting our life issues on that and last but not least uh, how much the new refrigerant the recent f gas and the next incoming PFAS is going to change it the way we are designing data centers. So, of course, uh, uh, at Snyder, we have the complete portfolio. We would like to be uh, to design cooling for data center, assist you on that uh, with uh, high quality, resilient, and sustainable cooling. However, the, the key point for us is to offer an end-to-end -end approach. So we see that uh, in particular, the evolution to liquid cooling uh, and the evolution to the next sustainable challenges is not anymore a game that uh, a cooling company or any other operator can do alone. Uh, these are challenges that uh, the, all the ecosystem, the data center ecosystem need to take care of together. So we should work together, together with uh, the contractor, specifier, consultant, advisors, uh, and the other cooling companies, and to design the best data center and the most effective data center. It again, it is not uh, anymore a game which uh, can be won by a single player in the market. It is a community that uh, need to win the challenges together. So that's why I'd love to have this conversation and many other conversations with you guys to create a community which can uh, sustain the evolution on to better data center design. With uh, a very wide portfolio, again, uh, Cooling, uh, unfortunately, it is not uh, an easy stuff. Uh, there is not a product uh, which fit uh, uh, at all, and uh, using that product, uh, all the solutions are addressed. Uh, a wide cooling portfolio is required. Uh, we will learn that the, more, the, the new standard and the new requirement, for example, on, on refrigerant will also move this portfolio even wider with different solutions by country. Uh, in particular, Europe is playing a different game than other countries globally. So we need uh, uh, to have a wide portfolio and we need to act together as a community to identify which one of these portions of the portfolio are the best uh, for, for the specific application. Uh, on uh, air or water or liquid, uh, all of those are uh, uh, very important to be addressed together. Because when we look at uh, a... Global footprint, we need to serve these with, from our global factories. But uh, when we look at this global footprint, uh, there are different ways to design a data center. There is uh, uh, something based on chilled water, 
the on the refrigerant or or air. So if we can try to oversimplify from A to Z the possible different solution. Uh, of course, there are many of those. There are multiple uh, with pros and cons. Uh, uh, but we can oversimplify saying that uh, one uh, is on chill water or on dark expansion or on centralized air handling unit. More in general, what we are capturing right now is that the larger the data center are, which is something that is happening in the market, the AI, the densification, and the high requirements of digital services are moving on cloud and extra large data center in the cloud. All of those are moving more on the chilled water uh, unit with perimeter or with foam wall or with CRA. That's something that uh, is uh, more in line with uh, the densification, but also in line with uh, two things. Point number one, removing uh, the refrigerant from the equation or from the Y space. The refrigerant-based system or the centralized running unit uh, have contact uh, between the Y space air and the refrigerant. And unfortunately, the, the new refrigerant are slightly flammable. So on the design perspective, on the engineering perspective, the uh, a flammable, although slightly flammable, refrigerant open a new challenges on how to design a data center. So size is driving chilled water, refrigerant is driving chilled water, but also liquid. A, although in a data center is not designed for liquid, it might be designed for liquid. And that's why what we are capturing, despite the uh, portfolio is very wide uh, and we are available to provide any of those, uh, the chilled water, perimeter, foam wall are the most used in uh, the data center and in the cloud service provider. So the flexibility and the, the no refrigerant in the white space and driving this. Of course, the uh, edge approach is still using refrigerant-based units, in particular within row units. However, the, uh, the centralized rendering unit and the refrigerant-based unit uh, are in this moment uh, experiencing more uh, challenges because of the refrigerant or because of the liquid cooling than chilled water. So more in general, a comment is that the chilled water are, are more in line. And of course, despite any of those solutions are pros and cons, there is unfortunately not a solution which is the best at all, regardless the application, the location, and the usage. There are plenty of pros and cons by application. However, again, the uh, challenges we are all together uh, uh, called to uh, define and to solve on efficiency, on sustainability, on, uh, no, on no waste water, on uh, no waste uh, uh, water usage are moving uh, the design for any sizes more on chilled water connected to either underfloor air conditioning units or perimeter units, or fan wall, which are the solution where the capacities are even larger for that. So these are the, the scenarios we are capturing right now and where we are acting, in particular because uh, we need to be sustainable. And again, there are no way, there is not a single action we need to do for uh, being sustainable or creating a sustainable data center. Uh, of course, uh, scope free on uh, is primarily impacting uh, the energy use. A cooling unit, a chiller, if you look at the uh, environmental passport for a chiller, the life cycle assessment for a chiller in a data center application, 90% of the uh, um, energy on the sustainability impact is connected to the phase use, to the scope-free. 
because it uses a massive quantity of energy. However, minimizing the energy use cover only one portion, is only one angle we have in looking how we can be more sustainable. The refrigerants are certainly another one. The no use of water in the data center. Many times people are mentioning waterless data center. For us, waterless data center means no waste water. So no adiabatic. We have adiabatic in the system. But uh, the usage of the massive use of water and that adiabatic requires is not in line with uh, the what the European conditions are. I mean, today in LA it is raining a lot, but we spent all of the winter in dry situation with no rain, with the river at very low level. And that's not only Italy, it is all the all Europe uh, that is experiencing the same. So we should not be dependent on water, which does not mean to not use water inside the pipeworks, of course. And, and that's the most important. We should not look at only a single portion of the equation, but we need to look at the implication of all the action we are doing to have a sustainable data center. So minimize energy use, definitely. We need to reduce the energy consumption, to use free cooling as more as we can, leverage on high temperature, design a data center according to the HRA recommendation, 27 degrees C discharge at minimum, 22, 23 degrees C at the chiller side. Try to have district heating as for the previous conversation we had, you had in this um, uh, event, and try to move to liquid cooling, to not use new refrigerant, uh, migrate to new refrigerant, use natural refrigerant if they have the same level of efficiency of a scientific refrigerant, not use natural just because they, it is cool to use something natural. It is uh, important to consider also the energy perspective. No water dependency. Okay, that's fine. But uh, if you use water, just to overcome the peak temperature, it might be considered an opportunity end-to-end -end for an end-to-end -end saving. So those are some best practices, we can say, on designing a um, carbon neutral data center or at least a sustainable data center with a specific action on greenhouses. We know that uh, the, uh, the, the F gas has been uh, uh, released uh, back in March this year. This is going to uh, not change completely the market because many players uh, already migrated to new refrigerants. But uh, the good thing of this F gas is that it is very in line with uh, also what the uh, Environmental Protection Agency in the United States is same, more or less the same period. So both Europe and the United States are migrating away from the high GWP refrigerants. So one, two, three, four, ZID, five, one, three are something that are common and widely used. These new standards are going to be even more uh, uh, important to accelerate the transition to the new uh, to the new refrigerants. Uh, we can say that Snyder is ready. Many players are ready on the chiller. The challenge is the new refrigerant inside the white space because they are, although slightly flammable, they are flammable. So again, this is something that, uh, in our experience, shows more people designing a data center with chilled water than uh, refrigerant based. And then there is the next to come, which is the PFAS. We are discussing about PFAS since many years. Uh, right now there are expected evolution on that, which will force people to migrate to natural. But the big question about natural refrigerant is if they are at the same level of efficiency of the scientific refrigerant or not. 
Because it, using natural refrigerants, just because they are natural, with a, lo a lower level of efficiency, it is greenwashing. It is not real efficiency. So we need to be pretty robust in uh, accepting, be compliant with the new standard, but not accept those just because it is, again, cool to have natural. We need to be, and all the industry need to migrate to a new generation of refrigerant when the technology is ready to get at least some level of efficiency that they have right now. But the fact that it's going to, the FCAS is in place, so scientific refrigerant, we lodge the approval, is going to happen. My personal recommendation, despite the, the revolution is, the evolution is moving to a limit, in particular for large equipment, uh, around 750 for chillers in particular as GWP. Our personal recommendation is not consider these as the best in class. 750 allowed to have 513 refrigerant, for example, 515 refrigerant, for example, but also 1234ZD. 1234ZD has a very good efficiency and the GWP of seven. So despite 513, 515 are compliant with the new F gas, we strongly encourage all of you to consider ZD as a possible solution, despite the other comply with the F gas, because these will be a real step, a real leap in to be more efficient and more sustainable for data center. And then, of course, this is valid for any data center, but we know that the densification is happening. The request that the, all of us has on digital service is increasing the density and uh, liquid cooling is coming or is already here. What is the real dead end of air cooling? That's a big question. What, uh, on the technology perspective, we can say that you can cool with the air even more than 50 kilos per rec. However, the most recent ASHRAE recommendation, in particular the H1 envelope released by ASHRAE back in 2020, says that more than 50 kilowatt per rack requires a supply air temperature between, between 21 and 24 degrees C versus the usual 27 in the recommended envelope. These make possible to cool with cooling, air cooling, but completely not efficient. So it is a different angle we need to use. So despite the technology can do this, 50, is the dead end of air, more than 50, we need to use absolutely liquid cooling. Less than that, that's uh, liquid is possible. It is a fantastic opportunity to be more sustainable. However, it is complicated because liquid is at the beginning of its journey. Again, it's important to be clear on the messages. Many times people say liquid cooling is the only way to be sustainable. That's partially true. Liquid cooling is a great way to be sustainable for the current densities. For more than 50 kilowatt per rack is the only way to cool a server. So again, saying that sustainability is allowed by liquid is partially, it's a partially greenwashing message. It is very, very true with low density. It is not true with high density. High density requires liquid, period. That's the only choice. How a data center with liquid is designed with. So again, liquid cooling is not a product. Liquid cooling is an architecture. And again, all the ecosystem, all the cooling community in the data center business need to react on that, considering what it is in the server, that's fine, is liquid cooling server. There are server manufacturers that are providing embedded technology over there. 
But there is everything else, the cooling distribution unit, uh, the complementary air cooling, which remain in the equation, the heat rejection unit, which need to be combined together in order to optimize the data center. So again, uh, it's, an, it's uh, an architecture that use multiple different bit and pieces on that. So that's uh, a, an example uh, how not complicate, but broad is the choices for the best heat rejection unit, the best cooling distribution units, uh, and the best solution in the white space. There are, none of those are applicable everywhere or are perfect everywhere or for every application. The best solution I need to be addressed by location, by application. For example, in hybrid data center is very good with cold plate connected to a in-room cooling distribution unit and some complementary air cooling to dissipate the electrical portion. And all of those connected to a heat rejection unit. Which one? A dry cooler can be used, certainly it is possible, but only for low density and low climatic condition. For hot, warm zone or high density, a dry cooler is not enough. You need a chiller or you need a free cooler compressor assistant. So <coughs> the combination of these layers define the data center solution. Because again, on the Y space approach, the five different technologies that are available today, so the direct chip, the immersion, either two phase or one single phase, are pros and cons by application. It is true that uh, the first wave of liquid is single phase direct chip because it is easy to go. It does not uh, reinvent the wheel and the layout of the data center, but all the others have pros and cons. So again, the recommendation here and it is not possible to do in 20 minutes, of course, is to be more in contact with the players of the game and uh, define together which is the best solution at the white space side, but also at the heat rejection side or on distribution side. So again, it is a global discussion and an end-to-end -end discussion that all of us need to have and to only working together, we can define what is the best server, the best CDU, and the best outdoor interjection unit. On this, for example, it depends, the best solution depends if you have low densities and clone climate, or high densities, or different densities and different uh, climatic zone. Which one of these, for example, are the best? It depends where you are, what you're designing for, and how you would like to address the customer requirement. So again, it's very important, the cooperation, the portfolio, and how we can work together on that. So I try to condensate from A to Z all the main points for a data center cooling infrastructure. Of course, 20 minutes is, doing this in 20 minutes is a challenge, but I'd love to get any question any point that you may have. Thank you so much, Maurizio. It was a challenge, but you did really well at condensing it <laughs> into the short period you had to talk about it. It's a big subject to, to cover. Um, yeah. We've got a couple of questions from uh, the audience, if I can just put these to you quickly. Uh, the first is, we're really keen on reducing our carbon emissions, so we're trying to work out what cooling technology is the most efficient. Could you discuss the long-term environment, environmental impacts of various cooling technology technologies, which systems are considered most sustainable? More in general, in a very few words, the most sustainable is uh, high temperature um, chilled water solution. So chillers combined with high temperature application, how much high? Depends if you're moving on air or liquid, but let's try mm -hmm. to have the higher water temperature to design and select a chiller designed for that. So with embedded free cooling and mm -hmm. use the most efficient compressor and the most efficient refrigerant you can. 
This is definitely the most sustainable without any adiabatic on that, mm -hmm. except for perhaps very, very peak temperature, but uh, all the normal use should not use water. Using water to save energy is similar mm -hmm. to clean a room, moving the dust into the carpet. That's not a real sustainability. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Maurizio. And just one more question before I let you off the hook. Um, given the new F gas regulations impacting refrigerants used in cooling systems within the EU, and considering the varying compliance dates and the phase out schedules, it's a lot. What strategies could we use? We want to ensure both compliance with these regulations, but without sacrificing offer operational efficiency. Again, uh, the, the good news is that uh, in particular for chillers, uh, the new low GWP scientific refrigerant are pretty, good, pretty good. Uh, we uh, know that uh, ZD in particular, 1234 ZD in particular with the turbo core compressor mm -hmm. are more efficient than 1348. 513 is probably a good compromise when you have a screw compressor, but in general, with synthetic, the best choice is the best combination for sustainability, efficiency, and low GDP is TurboCore plus ZD. The natural are uh, perhaps good in efficiency for comfort cooling, propane, for example. They when they but their efficiency level at uh, the data center conditions, so in particular at the high temperature, are mm -hmm. not yet at the same yeah. level of synthetic. So there is a lot to do there. Probably in the long run, they will be part of the game. But today, the best choice for our planet is ZD and TurboCore. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us, Maurizio. Uh, we really appreciate your insight today. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for, thanks for the question. Have a great Thank day. Thank you. Bye-bye.